Can we talk about Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness for a second? Thank you. Hey guys, it is me, and I'm here to make a video about Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. I saw it almost a week ago, and I haven't really had a chance to make a video about it yet, but I want to, because wow, what an amazing movie. You know, there are people out there who might not have liked it as much as I did, but uh, I really enjoyed it. I enjoyed it from beginning to end. There are not that many movies that you watch they just hold your attention all the way through. But this one did it for me. I really, really enjoyed it. There were certain directions they went in that, once again, I know a lot of people had um, issues with. I absolutely adored. Um, where do we even begin with this movie? Well, first, let's begin with Sam Raimi, the guy who I know from The Evil Dead. Like, uh, Army of Darkness, The Evil Dead 3, that's like one of my favourite movies. His style of direction is fantastic. He did the Spider-Man movies, which were awesome. And then to have him back doing this in the world of Doctor Strange was fantastic. Like the, the zooming camera angles and the big quick takes and the comic book effects and stuff. Right down to this amazing fight scene between two Doctor Stranges where they're using musical musical notes against each other. It was just like, boom, brilliant. Um, the other thing I loved about this movie is, oh, talk about characterization. And talk about parallels between your villain and your hero. This movie really wasn't about Doctor Strange. It was about the Scarlet Witch, Wanda Maximoff, played by Elizabeth Olsen. And I know a lot of people are like, oh, you did Wanda wrong. She's, she's not evil. It's like, no, Wanda has always been evil. Wanda Maximoff, in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, has always been evil. And she's had periods in which her needs have aligned with the cause of good. She started off in the MCU in Age of Ultron fighting for Hydra voluntarily. She was fighting for the Nazis voluntarily. And yeah, she switched sides. She didn't switch sides because she was working for the Nazis. She switched sides because she was working for a robot that wanted to destroy all of humanity, wanted to destroy life on Earth. And she was like, oh, that would suck because I live on Earth or my stuff's there. So yeah, she's not a good character. I mean, she's a brilliant character, but I mean, as a person, you have to understand that the whole point of her is she is the Scarlet Witch filled with chaos magic, and she is a very morally ambiguous character. Just look at WandaVision. WandaVision was an amazing show that portrayed her doing something unspeakably evil, enslaving an entire town. Um, but because it was from her point of view, oh, it's brilliant because you kind of got a sympathetic viewpoint of why she was doing it. It's like there are, no villain is a villain in his own head or her head. Villains always think they're justified in what they do. And so WandaVision was this incredibly subversive show which showed somebody doing evil things in a way that made you sympathetic to the evil things they were doing. And Wanda did not get any kind of uh, a payback for what she did. She kind of escaped scot-free. So really, what did anyone expect? Wanda's evil. Wanda has always been evil. And I just love how she was introduced in this movie and within seconds it was like, oh, she's evil. And then, boy, talk about evil. She was magnificent. Elizabeth Olsen as a Scarlet Witch was just brilliant. Possibly the best written female villain of all time. Definitely one of the, the few female villains who actually gets the opportunity to be villainous. Because until now, we've all clutched our pearls, the idea of women being evil. It's like the irony of supposedly living in a feminist society is that the people start to question things. It's like, oh, you can't have a bad person who's a woman because we've somehow come up with this idea of, of uh, women have to, to be elevated to the point that they're blameless for everything. But real characterization is when women do have flaws, they're real people. And women can be evil. In, you look in real life and there are some very, very evil women. And I love the fact that that Marvel just did not hold back. They were just like, you know what? We're going to make Wanda evil. And we build her up. So everyone is like shocked at this. And everybody also has the, you know, that quantum of solace for her, that, that modicum of um, sympathy for what she's going through. But the way, oh, they, they have this fantastic scene where she dream walks into another reality and is right there in front of her kids and she can choose happiness with her kids 
or she can choose letting her alternative reality live happily with her kids and she's like no I'm gonna go and do evil shit knowing that it might destroy that happy life that she's got there it was wonderful it was like one of the the best written purest viewpoints into a truly crazy evil villain and I just thought it was magnificent and I thought Elizabeth Olsen was fantastic in it and the character arc towards the very end finally you had that moment it was brilliant I think it was one of the best character arcs ever put onto celluloid it's definitely the strongest character arc throughout the Marvel Cinematic Universe even though it doesn't have a happily ever after kind of thing that's the point we don't always have a happily ever after but what we do have is a satisfying arc and it was great but let's move on to Doctor Strange. Oh, Benedict Cumberbatch. It's funny, I saw an interview with him uh, using his British accent and stuff like that. I was like, who is this guy? Because he's wonderful in Doctor Strange. He's just so arrogant and swaggering. And the whole thing, the whole uh, dichotomy of it was, you know, in all these other realities, Doctor Strange was this evil megalomaniacal person who was so arrogant he thought he could manage this this evil um, power of the Darkhold and in this reality our Doctor Strange from the 616 universe perhaps the only reason he wasn't that evil version of himself was because Wanda got there first so it was really cool to see this character having to be confronted with very much his own darkest side and it was you know it wasn't even it was a literal metaphor because he met different versions of himself and he you know met a version of himself that's trying to suck America Chavez's power who you know wasn't necessarily the bad guy but made a bad guy choice and then he met his evil Doctor Strange counterpart who was just pure evil it was it was great I thought they explored that really really well uh America Chavez yeah she she spent most of the movie like running away from things but had a really satisfying conclusion to her arc uh, Wong was fantastic. I don't know, I just... The entire movie I thoroughly enjoyed and I really, really enjoyed even the, the cameos that they had. I mean, when Reed Richards came on there and it was uh, John Krasinski or whatever, I was like, yes, fan casting for the win! When they had Professor X come in and they played the X-Men uh, theme music from the 90s cartoon show. I was really into that in the 90s. I was like, yay! I had no idea who Black Bolt was, but his death scene was incredibly satisfying, so I looked him up afterwards. Uh, actor Anson, Anson Mount. So it's kind of nice the way they legitimise the Inhumans TV show without making it part of like the movie canon. Um, I love the way that the same thing they did with Monica Rambeau as, uh, as Captain Marvel, because the original Captain Marvel was an African-American woman, and then she got turned into the Carol Danvers that we know. So this is a way of like acknowledging that. It was, it was brilliant. I left feeling immensely satisfied. I really, really enjoyed that movie. I really enjoyed the wild ride it took us on. I really enjoyed the difficult moral uh, maze that they put the characters through. I mean, that, the scene where Wanda Dream walks into another version of herself and like puts her kids in danger, that I had like my heart in my throat. I was like, because it was just so intense from an emotional perspective and it's very rare that, that like a mainstream popcorn chomping movie makes you feel that level of like discomfort so I just thought it was great that's all I really want to say about it I mean um, I don't really have any criticisms for it I thoroughly enjoyed it I'm more looking forward to Thor coming out in uh, in July but it's it was great and I enjoyed it more I think than Spider-Man No Way Home because I think it it wasn't so much of a fan service. It was like it was a legitimate movie and it was a legitimate movie that not only was entertaining in its own right, but paved the way for further things that are coming in the MCU. It's a really exciting time to be alive as a comic book fan and I am just loving every single moment of it. So that's my review. I'm gonna wrap this up. I will be back sometime soon with more nonsense about more stuff and until then, stay tuned. I'm Roland Hume. I've sold 67,000 copies of my books. If you want to find out how I did it, I've got a link right here you can click. And otherwise, don't forget to subscribe. I've got more videos coming soon. Thank you.